and 10 the entire season, or 10 and 7 right now. What does that mean to you? I mean, I think everybody, you know, can share in this. We, we've all done the same thing together. This city has sort of lived, you know, the same life that the coaching staff has for, for the period of time since I've been here. And, you know, nobody's ahead of ourselves. We, we, we are, are happy where we're at. Uh, we're certainly not content where we're at. I think that really my judgment of the game is I would give us an A on defense and like a C minus on offense. Um, but, you know, the record uh, at this stage, we, uh, we, we, we're, um, we're happy with it. You know, we're happy with it, but we got a lot of work to do. Brett, why the C minus on offense? Turnovers, uh, you know, at times ratty shots. I thought we could have put them down a little bit earlier. Uh, the mere fact that I'm greedy, um, you know, and you want more. Um, I thought that our defense, as I said, was, uh, was excellent. But when you look at some of the turnovers and finding the balance of, you know, Joe hasn't had a touch in about six trips. You feel that. There's no play call needed, like if team feels that. Some quick early threes. You know, not all threes are good threes. You know, judgment on that. Sloppy portions of the game where we just didn't even get a shot. And, um, you know, it's part of the evolution. And if you said you can have bad offense versus bad defense, I would take the uh, bad offense and have good defense any day of the week. You're talking about the defense, um, I know you're probably glad that you, would, you could hold such a talented backcourt to 35 points. Can you speak about that? Well, you go, if you look at CJ, you know, CJ was one for 14. Damian got it going a little bit late. The game plan, uh, the execution of the defensive game plan, I thought the guys did well. You know, we, we, we guarded the other t players uh, effectively to help us produce some of these low percentage numbers that we're speaking of. I think that it was a team effort. I think that those guys saw a crowd. It wasn't just the people that were guarding them. It was a team effort. And... Uh, you know, those two guys, I thought we, uh, we did a pretty good job of restricting them from normal numbers. Brett, was there any thought to take Joao out of the game when he picked up that fourth foul with about 226 left? Or is that a situation where you want to teach him, like, I need you to be able to play through foul trouble in tough spots? It's a, a little bit of both of that. Like, I felt the game still wasn't where we wanted it to be. And it is, there's no right or wrong with that. You know, like it's a coach's gut feel. And it was as much as I felt like he was, he was uh, playing with a pace and my gut feel like he was not gonna foul. I felt comfortable that he was not gonna foul. And I also felt comfortable that we needed him at that stage. And so the combination of the two you know, it allowed us, I think, to grab onto a little bit of a lead. The fact that he didn't foul, you know, makes the decision maybe a little bit wiser, but it was done for those reasons. Brett, you had been saying earlier that you were going to expecting to see an improvement in Embiid's fitness base after Thanksgiving. Now we're at Thanksgiving. So where is he at in, in, in comparison to where you thought he was going to be? He has exceeded my expectations to date kind of all over the place. Um, as I've said to all of us, and I'll say again, you know, before, because you're right, Thanksgiving was sort of the delineation that we were all speaking about. Let's get to Thanksgiving, and then we're going to see something else. Um, what, did he play 30-something minutes tonight? 30. 30, yeah. You know, and just he's missed, what, two games? You know, and so you, you look at it, that volume of minutes and that, volume of games played, if we all knew that at the start of the season, we'd all be quite happy. And uh, I think he's been great. I think that he's done exceptional work to get his body right. The fact that he played the other night with a little bit of an injury shows what he wants to do. You know, he, he, he doesn't want to disappoint his teammates or fans. He's prideful. If you went in and you looked at him like, you know, take off his shirt, he's cut up, his body fat, his skin folds, his physical presence, his physique is good. He's good. He's probably under 280 and he looks it. And that's a lot of work when you don't have the opportunity to practice in between games. And so to date, he has, uh, he has exceeded expectations.
mentioned uh, rebounding as a priority. I think I think Portland had 11 offensive rebounds on like 59 missed shots. How do you think they held up? I think we did okay. You know, it featured at halftime. Uh, a few times we went to close people out and we leaked out and, you know, long shot, long rebound type stuff. Um, I think a few times our guards could have got in. We call them barriers. you got to take you and him out of the play and just bury them behind the backboard. We weren't physical uh, in that regard. For the quantity of missed shots, because they only had, you know, 81 points and, as you said, 34%, there's a lot of missed shots and offensive rebounds to get. I thought we were pretty good. You know, that, that um, margin of 57 to 48, I thought we did a pretty good job on the defensive boards. Two more guys. How much of a correlation between Joe's fitness and your defense? You, you held Utah to 35-3 and Portland at 33-7. Is there any correlation? It, the, it is, the dots are completely connected. You know, when you look at our individual defensive players, you get the length of Ben, this go with the starters. You get the length of Ben Simmons, and Robert Covington and Dario Saric. And JJ is an underrated defensive player. You go to the metrics and you start studying the analytics on how he matches up with people. He always surprises me when we come into games. And then you got Joel behind it. You know, to a man, there's some toughness. I think that there is some length. I think that there is a unity in what they want to do and how they want to be perceived, what we're trying to build the program around, defense, and let's, let's grow our offense as this thing shakes out. I think Joel connects all those dots. The development of Ben Simmons, you know, when he's driving down the court, teams are sagging. Um, what are you telling him? And also, since it's Thanksgiving tomorrow, what do you think before with this team? Well, let's go to Ben. Um, to, to swallow up space, just to chew up space. Every inch they give you, run it down their throat. Just keep taking it and swallowing it and just keep going as deep as you can. You can see... I think you can see the attention that, that, that we place on trying to develop his, his uh, finishing. You know, I thought tonight he had a down game of finishing. A few times he got as close as you could ever imagine because they were going so far back. We saw last week him, or last game, him coming to jump stops and gather himself and going like probably, t you know, another foot to finish ease more easily over the, over the front of the rim. But I think that that's the way the league has decided to play him lately. I think that he's figuring it out just fine. I think the tandem of Joel Embiid and Ben in early offense as the game's coming with Joe just almost like just runs in front of him and brush cuts, you know, Ben's man and gets him easy layups or dunks. They're figuring that little trick out. And I think uh, his growth is coming and he's getting used to how the league is playing him. In relation to what personally I feel most thankful for, is we have been given time to try to grow this thing. I love the players in that locker room. I've had a staff with me for five years. We've all gone through a lot. I feel like we're building something that we had envisaged for a while. And uh, it's early days, but we see daylight and we see fruits of our labor with uh, the people that have gone through a lot. I'm proud of my team. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. Locker room's open, Brett.